Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. <laughs> this is episode 453 in an ongoing series of talks, which I'll introduce to, introduce to you in a second. Uh, the topic today is self-trust. Actually, in a way, I like a self-trust because the second part is a slippery, a slippery slope out of integrity. And I'm going to break this down for you, give you some tips, some guidance, and some... Um, simple things you can do to raise your self-trust and also your integrity. Good deal? All right. So before I jump in, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks on Facebook Live initially, then it goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 453, so I've done a few of these. Um, and of late, the top topics have been a lot about self-support type systems. So at least the last four out of the last seven, no, four out of the last six broadcasts, including this one, are keys, tips, clues, and insights to help you be, be, a, be a better being in life, in love, and everywhere else. So if you haven't watched my other broadcasts, I highly recommend you watch those after you finish watching this one. So the topic today, again, is self-trust, the slippery slope out of integrity. And really should say the lack of self-trust is the slippery slope out of integrity because self-trust is a way to improve yourself, your integrity. I think that makes pretty much simple sense. So let me break this down for you and give you some thoughts and some clues as to how you may be betraying your integrity. Yes, betray your integrity because that's part of this too. In the... Um, topic of self tr of self trust a lot of it comes from and I've spoken about this recently as well that we have a bad habit as people of ignoring agreements with ourselves yes agreements with ourselves I don't mean agreements out there although that's true too because well, I'll get to that in a second I'll save that one I don't want to jump, don't want to get ahead of myself it sometimes feels easy to make agreements with people out there because somehow they would hold us to account Whereas groups with ourselves, we don't keep because we don't hold ourselves to account. And that is very wishy-washy on the scale of integrity, let me be clear. But one of the subtleties about this stuff, and it's one of these challenges, is that any agreement you make with other people automatically includes agreements with yourself because you're involved in the agreement. So I'm going to bring that one down a bit later on. I'm going to bring that one back in later on, I think, because it will fit and explain what's happening, I believe. Let me... We'll see. This is never scripted, so we'll see what happens. So, I spoke about this, about keeping agreements as a fundamental way to have more fun, more joy, more, more alignment in your life. And that's part of what self-trust is based on, is can you trust yourself? Duh. <laughs> that's obvious. But I want to break it down this way to make sure you get this point. Is how do you build trust with yourself unless you do what you say you're going to do? Because the biggest part of trusting yourself is to prove to yourself that you can rely upon yourself. Same as you do with anybody else. You can trust other people by the fact you can rely upon them. And usually how you rely upon them is that they keep their word. They do what they say they're going to do. They keep their agreements. They show up. They're consistent. They make good on what they say they're going to do. It sounds so simple. Yet for ourselves, we tend, as a general population, I'm not speaking specifically of individuals, but I'm saying as a general rule, for many people, I'm aware of this, as has been said many times in, on many platforms, I'm not going to say where in particular, because you can look for yourself. People tend to not back up what they're doing by saying, by, sorry, not back up what they're saying by doing what they're going to say. And this failure in ownership of what we said we're going to do is a major, um, say leak is not the right word, but a major um, a drain on your ability to have integrity. And as much as it sounds strange and say this, but having integrity is a very powerful place to be in life right now. There's a need more and more on the planet, all over the planet, to step into integrity in your life, in your roles, in your responsibilities. And so keeping your agreements is a powerful piece of maintaining that. This is, this is going to sound so mundane in so many ways, but for so many people this could be a game changer. And it's a fundamental thing that we forget 
that the ability to really stand true to our values, to say true to ourselves, keep our agreements, say what we're gonna do what we can say we're gonna do, keep flipping that one for some reason, allows us to shine more brightly, own our integrity, and be fully aligned to who we are. And that is really where the work makes um, makes good, where the reality is better, because you said yes to that. So there's another piece I want to bring in there. Which one was that one? Ah, yes. <laughs> I have to say this. We people, human beings, have a really interesting habit of having a sliding scale of agreements. And that sliding scale is predicated on a couple of things. One of those is that we make agreements important when we think they're important enough. Another agreement's not so important because they're not important. That's making so much sense in so many strange ways. Because here's one thing. If it's an agreement, for example, to... Um, take your friend to the airport, for example, then you'll follow through with that. But if it's your agreement with yourself to um, meditate when you first wake up in the morning, that may or may not happen as easily. Because it's a priority system. There's a sliding scale. Not slippery slope, but a sliding scale. <laughs> slippery slopes and sliding scales. A sliding scale of importance of agreements that means that the more important it is, the more we'll keep it. The less important it is, we won't. And that's an error in approach, and I'll get to that in a second. Second thing is, the second part of this valuing of agreements is who we make them with. There are certain people that if we make an agreement with them, we will never violate it. We'll always keep it. There are other people, and for yes, for a lot of you out there, including yourself, where you make an agreement and you may or may not keep it. Again, an error in approach. The thing that I'm getting clear about is that when you make agreements and you don't make and you don't keep them, whether it's with yourself or somebody else, you're paying the same you're paying a price on this. And I really want to make sure you get this point because it's a fundamental piece about agreement keeping and that valuing of yourself is that every agreement you break costs you. Doesn't matter who you made it with, doesn't matter how important the agreement was. If you break the agreement, there's no difference in scale. If you made the agreement to um, I don't know, show up at somebody's wedding versus an agreement about um, picking up groceries. It doesn't matter how important which one is over the other. The reality is that if you break either one of them, the same price happens inside. The same price happens inside. Yes, you'll pay a bigger price out there because that person will hold more resentment or upset with you because you didn't show up for their wedding, that sort of thing, absolutely. But the internal reference point where your integrity lives is impacted um, uniformly that works if you break an agreement on any level if you make an agreement of any value if you make an agreement with anybody else or yourself and as I mentioned earlier by the way any agreement you make with somebody else does include you because you're in the agreement so any agreement you break regardless of its importance or who it's with hits you the same way which means that those light agreements you throw away are costing you as much as the big agreements you make mistakes on so for you to have a greater sense of integrity truly aligning to agreements that make make sense to you is vital and here's the thing I talked about this before as well this is how I learned a seminar years ago if you want to keep your agreements working for you so that you raise your self-esteem and, and your um, integrity which I was talking about in the title then there's some keys that you need to know about agreements that will make it easier for you because as I said before if you don't keep agreements with big or small, it doesn't make a difference. So here's the thing. First of all, if you make agreements, write them down. As silly as it sounds, in the agreements with yourself, if you write them down, they put them more front of consciousness. You'll notice them, you'll be aware of them, and you'll probably do them. That's one thing. Second one is make less agreements. It's going to sound so simple and so silly to say that, but the reality is for many people out there, you overcommit and you make agreements beyond your capabilities and then you break 17 of them because you can't do all 50 you've already planned. Not a right approach. So here's the thing. Because this is the piece. Well, this is another piece. If you make an agreement with somebody and you break it versus up front saying, I can't do that, 
the price you pay is higher for the broken agreement than if you say no at the beginning. So saying no, which is another place, by the way, is a methodology to free yourself in your agreement keeping because you may feel like you've got to say yes to everybody, which a lot of people out there, you may be one of those people who have to say yes to everybody and agree to everything they want to do. And you're going you're gonna to break the agreement. You know you are. It's actually healthier and more freeing and more empowering to say no up front than to say yes and then and, re and then break it later on. Oh, there's no one going to bring in. So write them down, make fewer, be willing to say no. Fourth one is if you have any agreement that's important to you but you know you're not going to be able to make it, for some reason you've got to change it, renegotiate. Now this one's a slippery one, so I want to be careful with this one. To renegotiate your agreements, if you make renegotiate every single agreement you make, people are going to start not trying, people are going to lose trust in you. Again, integrity and trust. So agreement keeping as a fundamental tool to raise your self-esteem and your integrity has to be done with um, import, impact, intention, reality. So make your agreements important, as I mentioned. Make them important, make them important by writing them down. Make fewer of them so you can make the ones you've made important enough to do them and take care of them. Say no so you actually have less to deal with. And then renegotiate as a last resort and only do it when you really must do it, not every single time, because that can be a pain in the butt for everybody else, just to be clear. So that's agreement keeping. I think I covered everything on that. But it's a fundamental piece of being able to trust yourself and trust and other people trusting you, as I mentioned. If you keep breaking your agreements or if you keep renegotiating your agreements with other people, their trust in you will go down really clearly. And the reality is, which you may not be aware of, if you do the same thing with yourself, your trust in yourself is going to go down as well. So integrity, which is tied to self-trust, will be very um, very much weakened by your lack of trusting yourself. So you've got my piece of salt on, on agreement keeping, so that's one piece. The other part being trustworthy and self-trust, which is a part of the integrity piece, is, is and it's tied away to agreements in another way, which is, which is um, which I would call reliability. If you have a dependability about you that people can lean on, trust, and, imply, and, and uh, implicitly um, count on you, that's a powerful part of integrity as well. It's the same thing about agreements, but it's done in a very um, unspoken way. Because what's happening is if somebody can trust you and rely upon you and they know that you're a solid person, you always be there for them, that's an agreement you guys have. That's an agreement you have with them that wasn't actually spoken, but it's become evident. And that's another part of the agreement piece. So if that dependability has to go, has to change for some reason, like you're, you're doing something different, it's important for you to communicate that. Because the integrity can be maintained if you re-communicate and say, you know what we've been doing, has been great so far, and it's changed some things. That keeps the integrity in ta intact and allows you to change the framework you're already playing in. So that um, being this quality, which is still tied to an agreement keeping format because you're doing it without saying it, is also evident in the ability you can change things and, and make things different. There's one other one that was coming through and see if it shows up again. So agreement keeping for integrity, renegotiating, um, I said slippery slope because agreement keeping, as I said before, is a place that if you don't maintain it, it will slide down slowly and you're basically your self-esteem, your self-trust and your ability to be relied upon and rely upon yourself will dissipate. And I don't know if the other one's going to show up now, so I may wrap this up. Okay. Unless it shows up in the last next couple of minutes, I'm going to basically wrap up and if it jumps back in, I'll come back to it. So if you're watching my broadcasts regularly, you know that I do these all the time, every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I put these onto my Facebook business page, which is barryselby.author. Actually, facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. It also goes onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, and they're all listed there if you want to watch them. That may be easy, the easiest place to find them now because my Facebook business page has other things on it besides my Facebook Lives. And I'm also adding or expanding my growing library of talks on my podcast on iTunes, which is called Messages from the Masculine. So that's the three places you can find my broadcasts after they're finished. If this is important to you and you've got questions, please put it in the comments below. Um, if I remember anything else I'll say, I'll put it in the comments below too, because I'm not remembering what is next, apparently. No, nope, I think I meant it out. Um, if you are someone who's looking for helping clarity and getting focused on how to take care of yourself in a better way, please reach out to me. I'll put a link in the comments about how you can set up a, a discovery session with me. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. Any groups for you can share it with, feel free to do that as well. Um, 
and what the hey. I've been talking about self-love a lot as well, and self-love is one of those things that when you do love yourself, your agreement keeping changes too, because when you truly love and honor who you are, you make your agreements more important. So as I spoke about this whole talk and the topic about agreement keeping, underneath that, self-love is a key. So I'll put that link in the comments too, because I just said I would. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Thanks for being here as always. Again, this is my daily broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Join me tomorrow at the same time, same channel. Um, and, and here's your homework, yes. I know I've got homework. Is look, is the end of the day, when you get to the end of today or another day when you're doing this, look back at your day and look at the places where you kept your agreements and when you didn't keep your agreements, whether it was internal or external. That's four things, yes. Where do you keep agreements with people outside of you? Where you kept your agreements within yourself? Where you didn't keep your agreements with people outside of you? Where you didn't keep agreements with inside yourself? Here's the thing. When you're making those lists up, which one's the longest? If the list is on the broken side of either one of those, you got homework to do. If it's not on that side, then you can refine and polish what you've already got and make it better and better. But if you notice also there's a disparity between agreements between yourself and other people, that's something to be aware of. Watching this broadcast again may give you some more insights about how you can change that and make your life more successful and your integrity stronger. And that I wish you have in spades. So with that, thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, yeah, 5 p.m. Pacific, Pacific time. See you again then. Take care of yourselves, please. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.